Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Gosh, there's a bunch of new games to play, a ton of new demos to download, and a lot of reviews are hitting. I love this kind of day. But it is bringing to light a developing problem for Nintendo Switch, and depending on how you like your games, this could be a big problem, and I think we need to talk about it. Cause uh, they're kind of not finishing them. Plus, Metroid Mania is setting in, and this is remarkable, and the Pokemon Company is continuing to make announcements for their awesome anniversary, unlike The Legend of Zelda. So what's going on guys and girls? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hope you guys are all doing amazing. I love you so much. Smash that like button, and let me know in the comments down below how you feel about what we're going to discuss. Also, if you're new here, welcome. We're almost at 100 episodes of Good Morning Mario. Thank you for supporting this show and making it possible. We're gonna have some really cool stuff planned next week, but this week, Metroid is doing work. All right, we know that Dread is coming in October and many people don't dread that. They're actually excited to see the franchise return in spite of scalpers just hiking that collector's edition. Anyways, the Wii U is back in the conversation. Oh my gosh, what did we do to get Wii U back? It's Metroid. Metroid Zero Mission and Metroid Fusion are the top two selling Wii U games right now on the Wii U eShop. Now, I don't think a lot of people are playing Wii U currently, so maybe this isn't that incredible of a feat, but I still think it's really nifty that so many people are interested in Metroid again, that they're going back to figure out where the franchise is at and play the games they missed. Plus this highlights a problem Nintendo has that they don't have a good way for you to play a lot of these games. Like going through the Wii U or trying to find an old GBA is the best opportunity to play Zero Mission and Fusion. That doesn't feel very fair. Although if you do own a Wii U, the games are eight bucks, totally worth it, amazing times, and would be a good prep course for the upcoming Dread. Let me know in the comments down below if you wish Nintendo would make their back catalog easier to access. And let me know if you're gonna go back and check out some old Metroids before the new one drops in October. Now with all these upcoming Switch games, one thing that's almost inevitable is that you're bound to run out of onboard memory. And that is where my friends at Lexar come in. You know I love the guys and gals over there. The play card people, they put out the best, fastest memory card in the business. And I love how much they can hold because these cards run from 128 gigs all the way up to a terabyte. And that is gonna store so many Switch games. You will be safe for so long. Make sure to click the link in the description down below. Good card, great people, and they love Good Morning Mario, so it's just the perfect match. Now, one thing that's a great match is when an anniversary yields a lot of awesome updates. Pokemon seems to be doing their part. Big new open world game unlike anything we've seen, remakes that have been highly requested, and now the celebration set for the trading card game. I love Pokemon cards back in the day, like it was an obsession. I convinced my parents to let me skip school to make sure I was there for the Fossil Booster Pack release. Anyways, they're releasing a new celebration set that sounds super cool. It's just over 45 cards, 25 of them being remakes of your favorite Pokemon cards from the last 25 years. So they're bringing back base set Charizard, which if you followed any of the eBay shenanigans, you know is the crown jewel of the entire collection. This one won't be worth anywhere near as much because it's a remake, but it's cool. They're bringing back a bunch of different packs, a bunch of cards, a few new ones as well, and they'll all be available on October 8th. Hopefully nobody gets into a fight at Target or Walmart because that just blows my mind. They're just cards. Like it's supposed to be fun. Stop hurting each other over collectibles. It's just not worth it. Scalpers, just ugh. No scalpers. No fighting, no rushing, just enjoy the bonds. Can we do that? Can we do that? Charizard, actually my favorite Pokemon. This T, not so great, but Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, one plus two on Switch, shaped up quite nicely. The game drops tomorrow. It's sitting at an 84 on Metacritic. Reviews say it's a really great port and the ability to take the classic Tony Hawk's remastered on the go is awesome. A few complaints about fidelity, obviously not gonna be as good as like Xbox or PlayStation, and the load times are a bit long, but it does sound like it is a super solid port, which is good news. Now then, Mario Golf Super Rush is a very different story. And I'm gonna break this segment into two halves. The first focusing on Mario Golf Super Rush because I've been playing it all morning. And the second, on what the heck is going on with Nintendo not finishing their games at launch 
and the ripple effect it's having amongst the fan base. And I really wanna get your take in the comments, so get typing. Mario Golf Super Rush has a 75 on Metacritic, which isn't awful, but by Nintendo first party standards, if you take out the remakes, this is the lowest score a main new Nintendo Switch first party game has got since, you guessed it, Mario Tennis Aces. But let's talk about Mario Golf Super Rush. I think the game is a very good golf game. The controls and mechanics are very sound. The character roster is very diverse. And this whole new speed golf thing is pretty cool, even if it does contradict with the more relaxed and contemplative nature of the game of golf. But when you're playing against human players and racing to see who can get the better score combined with the better time, it's a really fun competitive spirit. The game looks good. There's a single player adventure mode, although don't go in expecting some fleshed out campaign. This is more of a structure to help you build your skills and build out your me character. But that's where the problems start to arise because Mario Golf is quite light on content, at least by modern standards. There are six courses no online tournaments, and just a few secondary modes, speed golf and battle golf. They're quirky, definitely chaotic, and a decent change of pace, but I think in 2021, people are expecting more. And there's this developing rift between Nintendo's strategy and what fans want. And I'm hoping you can chime in because I was going through Nintendo's first party major Switch releases and their last four lowest scores they all have the exact same problem. And it's even infecting other games like Animal Crossing New Horizons. If we look at Mario Golf, Mario Tennis Aces, Super Mario Party, and Kirby Star Allies, all of these games felt very unfinished at launch. They were missing content, modes, things to do. And all these games eventually improved along the way. They incorporated DLC, regular updates, and new features to flesh the games out to be more than their original score. But we've got this competing set of ideas where fans want a great game for $60 on launch day. And Nintendo wants their games to last. They wanna stretch that shelf life and they feel like they're being consumer friendly by promising free DLC. Mario Tennis Aces added new modes, new online modes, new characters, and really built that game out to be more than it was at the beginning. Star Allies took an even larger turn, going from something really mediocre to something many fans really liked. And Super Mario Party didn't really ever fix its problems, but they did oddly add the much requested online features two and a half years later. So Nintendo is clearly operating with a very conscious strategy, especially for Mario Golf and Mario Tennis Aces, where they give you just enough content at launch. And then they add and they add and they add and they hope that you stick around because by the end, the game is going to be beefy and the game is going to most likely be what you want. But it's just going to take time to get there. And I think it is a seesaw. It is a balancing act to ensure that fans are happy when they spend and to make sure that players still have something to do as the game goes on. And you want to ensure that online player base is always there. I understand the difficulty, but I'm seeing with Mario Golf Super Rush's reaction that most Nintendo fans aren't having it. Now, to be fair, six courses isn't super slacking if you consider the other Mario Golf entries, but the most recent one on 3DS, that game had a ton of courses and there was a lot more creativity and variety amongst them. I also wonder if some of the problem might lie with the types of games these are. Maybe fans just aren't that excited about a tennis game or a golf game, and maybe there's not that much you can do with these genres. But to combat that, Nintendo could load them up with all the courses, all the features, all the characters, all the ideas. I mean, did you see the New Donk City Mario Golf Course at E3? That already looks like the best course in the entire game, and we only saw one shot. So I need you to tell me. Do you like Nintendo's plan of putting more and more into the game over time? I mean, it's free, they're sweetening the pot without you having to spend, but it's a slow process. Or would you just rather Nintendo said, hey, this is a cartridge chock full of content and we trust that it's so good, you're gonna wanna keep playing it. You're gonna wanna recommend it to your friends. 
Animal Crossing New Horizons is currently in the muck of this. That game started off incomplete in comparison to past entries, and they tried and did a good job in the first year of releasing regular content full updates, and it kept players very excited. Now the dark side is hit. No significant updates for months and months, and the player base is pissed off. 33 million people spent on this game, got excited, got ready. They look back at New Leaf and say, where's this, where's that, this character, that idea. Clearly, it's a business decision. But is Nintendo doing right by the players by prioritizing longevity over launch? It gets really messy. It almost feels like you're putting fans on a roller coaster and trusting that they'll enjoy the lows as much as the highs. Personally, I'm looking forward to more Mario Golf content. I'm gonna keep playing the game because I think the foundation is solid. But I think it's also clear that the fans have spoken. This style maybe just doesn't cut it in 2021. And perhaps there's a way to pack the game with more and still do DLC. I just think stretching it thin, it might bite Nintendo in the butt. I mean, look, a 75 Metacritic score, that's nothing to scoff at yet. But eventually, I don't know. I'm getting a little bit bummed by having to wait a year or more for my good game to become great. I'd just rather have it all at the start. I spend 60, give me the full product. I'm very eager to hear what you all have to say, so let me know in the comments down below and let's get to our poll. Remember, I post the polls every weekday on the community tab in the evening, so make sure to turn the notification bells on so you can be a part of the conversation. I wanted to get a little nostalgic approaching GMM 100. When did you start watching Switch Force? And this was really cool to see because we got a lot of variety. The biggest majority at 42% said you found Switch Force this year. And that makes a lot of sense because 2021 has been a great year for Switch and it's the year I started Good Morning Mario so we could form this family together. Now, 34% of you said a couple of years ago, which is a lot. And actually 12%, shout out to my OGs, you found Switch Force before the Switch came out. That's the very beginning, right? That is way back in 2016 when we first got this channel going. 7% said during E3, and 4% said just this week. So hello, special shout out to the newbies. You'll become one of the gang in no time. And in no time, we'll be back with Good Morning Mario again, coming at you tomorrow. Until that time, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to smash that like button. Hope you're all doing awesome out there, staying safe, staying healthy, staying happy, staying positive, and kicking this week's butt. We're almost to a weekend of gaming, and I can't wait to get there with all of you. So until then, thanks again. Switch Force, out.